there's a illustration you can find on any sheep farm. Any visitor or tourist who tries to call the sheep will find out very quickly that the sheep do not respond. But when the shepherd comes, who he might be a little boy, he might be an adult, might be a woman, whoever it is, when that shepherd calls those sheep, they come because they know his voice. Now, if you doubt what I'm saying, you should Google uh, the sheep know my voice. And what you will get are some Google YouTube videos where what I'm just telling you right now is demonstrated with a powerful proof. Sheep really do know the voice of their shepherd. They know when they're being called. They do respond. They do come. The shepherd can lead them. They will follow the shepherd. So you'll have this herd of sheep pricking up their ears, listening, then all moving out in a great uh, ensemble, all going the same direction. And then when they get to the shepherd, they follow him to the sheep fold or to the door or the gate or whatever, wherever he's going, they follow him. And it says in Yohanan chapter 10, uh, it says, you believe not because you are not of my sheep as I said unto you. So here he's talking to unbelievers who are giving him a lot of grief and they're arguing with him. So he just cuts to the chase and tells them the truth. You're not, you're not part of my flock, so of course you don't go along with what I'm saying. You don't recognize my voice. You don't obey my voice. And uh, as far as sheep go, you are a lost sheep. And that's all found in verse 26 of chapter 10 of John. Then it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now, one of the videos that I mentioned to you there's some sheep uh, several yards down the pathway. And she calls one of them by name. I think the sheep's name is Matthew. And she says, Matthew, come here, Matthew, Matthew. The other sheep don't respond, but Matthew does come. He comes right up to her. And... Uh, she reaches out and pats his head, and they have a nice little something like a handshake, you might say, a greeting. In verse 28, it gets more serious. It says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall any man snatch them out of my hand. Now let's go back to our analogy here. If you really are a sheep and you really do know the shepherd and the shepherd calls you by name, like Matthew the sheep was called by name and Matthew did come well, you will come. Now, if you have a sheep fold with sheep and a shepherd, that relationship of shepherd and sheep 
it's a lasting relationship. As long as that shepherd calls those sheep, those sheep will come. They are truly sheep belonging to him. And he is their shepherd. And they are not going to get snatched away. There's an enduring relationship. If you really have died to sin, if you really have been regenerated, if you really are born again, if you really do have a relationship to the shepherd, Ribi Melech HaMoshiach, Yehoshua, Yeshua, the Zunfun Deroibishter, the Bar Enosh, Savior of the world. If you really know him as your shepherd and he calls you, then that relationship will endure because you really have died to sin. You really do know the shepherd. He really has called you. You really do belong to him. And you are truly born again. So there is a certain security there. These sheep are secure. Their shepherd calls them and they come. He feeds them. He watches over them. He keeps the wild animals and the predators away from them. He brings them to the green pastures, the quiet waters. He's got a club to keep the wild beasts away. He's got a crook in his uh, shepherd's uh, hook to pull them back when they're in the wrong place. And that, that situation is enduring and it is secure. And just as with these sheep and this shepherd, there is a security there. Now, if you get away from that analogy and you get away from what I'm talking about here and the picture that I'm painting, which is the picture you have in John chapter 10, you can come up with some very hyper-Calvinistic antinomian scenarios where people are, so, are supposedly saved and saved forever, who don't even act saved, who are not even looking like a believer. Um, notice the doctrine that we have here is about God, basically, that he's able to do what he says, which is to save his people and to shepherd his sheep and bring them in to eternal pasture. And he has begun to do this and he will complete this good work, Philippians 1, 6. And uh, when you look at a shepherd and his sheep, there, there's no question that this is going on. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a, a kind of guaranteed situation. He calls, they recognize his voice. He calls them by name, they come to him by name. They, they know who their shepherd is. They won't follow anybody else. Go, go to those videos and watch them that I'm talking about. You will see the tourists, the visitors, they all try to call the sheep. The sheep do not come. It is only the shepherd who can call them effectively. And we're talking about an effective call, an effectual calling here. We're talking about a God who really calls and really saves, and he saves to the uttermost. But you have to be one of his sheep. 
You have to be a real converted sheep. If you're not a converted sheep, and if you don't know this shepherd, if you're a lost sheep without a shepherd, there is no promise of eternal security or even uh, conditional security. There's no promise at all for you. So he is true. He is just. He doesn't deny himself. He doesn't say, well, you know, I'm not a shepherd. I, I don't want to call my sheep or I can't call my sheep. No. Anyone who has eternal life because they have this relationship of sheep to shepherd, and that means going toward the eternal pasture uh, of heaven, which is an eternal sheepfold. Anyone that has this really has it. In this analogy, you don't find the sheep sort of knowing the shepherd, sort of following him, sort of hearing their name, sort of being able to recognize that it's his voice and sort of knowing when he's calling them by name and sort of uh, responding. No, there's a real response, a real recognition. And you don't see any instances of it where it doesn't happen. It is something that you can count on. It is something that is real. The faithful shepherd who calls his sheep by name can be relied upon to guard them and preserve them for eternal life. And that's what this doctrine is all about. God promises that nothing or no one can destroy this relationship. If you really have the relationship, you have it forever. There are some who believe for a while, but apparently it's more of an intellectual kind of uh, ascent rather than a converted sheep who now knows the shepherd, recognizes his voice, and comes almost as a reflex action when they when he hears the shepherd and um so there is a, a doctrine of security in the bible that we can have assurance yes there is a certain assurance uh this this is not to say that we can live a fast and loose life uh, because we have this assurance, uh, we can live uh, uh, a sinful life. No. The whole point here is that you are a converted sheep who has died to sin. You've really died. The old sinner is no longer there. He's gone. There's a new creature, a sheep. And that sheep recognizes and responds to the shepherd and has a relationship that is basically reliable and not a fickle kind of here today, gone tomorrow kind of thing. Now look at uh, Saul, Paul. The persecuting Saul, filled with hatred and pride, tearing up the house of God, dragging people off, throwing them in jail, going house to house, barging in on people, breaking up meetings, putting the believers in chains, dragging them down to Jerusalem, throwing them in the jail. That person no longer exists. He's gone. If anyone is in Mashiach, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. So... If that person were still in existence, there might be a very fickle relationship between that particular sheep and this shepherd. And perhaps he wouldn't respond by name. Perhaps he wouldn't uh, 
uh, you know, we come to the shepherd who calls him by name. But we believe that Romans 6, which says that if you are truly in Messiah, you are dead to sin. Paul was truly in Moshiach. He was dead to sin. The old, the old Saul had passed away. Yes, he did pummel his body and subdue it, less preaching to others. He, he himself become, might become a past, a past. He might become a, a castaway. Uh, yes, he did work out his salvation with fear and trembling. Yes, he did make his calling and election sure. But there's still a secure relationship. And if you go out on a sheep farm, and you watch the glory of the shepherd calling the sheep and the sheep hearing his voice, recognizing his voice and responding to his voice, you see the mystery of what we're talking about here. And it is not some fickle relationship that's up for grabs that might uh, uh, evaporate or disintegrate at any time. That is a kind of hyper Arminianism that is not scriptural. So between the hyper-Calvinism and the hyper-Arminianism, uh, there is this verse about the sheep. And uh, I really wish that you would look at it, John chapter 10, verses 26, 27, and 28. And this is how uh, the Messiah responded to his hecklers who did not go along with his teaching, who questioned him, who uh, disagreed with what he was saying. He just flat out told them, listen, of course you disagree. You're not, you're not in my sheepfold. You're not one of my sheep. If you were one of my sheep, this miracle would have happened to you. And you would have suddenly developed ears to hear and you would hear my voice. And when I called you by name, you would come to me. Look, my name is Philip. And there was a sheep named Philippos. And he said, look, just show us the Father and it will be enough for us. And the Messiah said, Philip, have you been with me so long and you still don't know me? You still don't recognize my voice? You still are not sure that you can come when I call because you don't know who I am and you don't recognize my voice and you don't know about your relationship to me as a sheep. When I called you to be one of my shalahim and you followed me, are you unclear now about the fact that this is a shepherd sheep uh, relationship? And uh, the way he answered Philippos is uh, very important to me because that's my name. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm listening to his voice and keeping myself in the love of God. But I have a certain comfort from John chapter 10, verses 26, 27, and 28, because if I were not born again, I would not really be following him at all. If I were not one of his sheep, I would have a lot of difficulties. And uh, when I was in the university, I would say, well, you know, I really want to believe, but he's just a nice dead prophet. How can I believe? And uh, at that point, I didn't really know who he was. I was like Philip questioning. But in 1971, I, I had a new birth and I was given new ears to hear. And I heard the shepherd's voice. And when he called me by name, I came, I responded. And I've been responding by the grace of God to the shepherd's voice ever since. Now that's about 50 years ago. 
And by God's grace, I intend to do that right to the end, right to the deathbed. And that's what you should do. And you should get some comfort from these verses in John chapter 10, verses 26 to 28. If you're such a hyper Arminian person that you have no assurance at all of your salvation, that you have to get saved a hundred times a day, and uh, you're, not, you're not sure about the shepherd or his voice or how he might call you by name, uh, then I'm, I'm, uh, inter I'm telling you that your doctrine is not right because there's, there is some assurance in the Bible. We can't have assurance that we are saved. Uh, the Lord's spirit witnesses to our spirit that we are children of God. And if, that, if that's not true in your case, you need to go back and search the scriptures and, and get this uh, straightened out doctrinally between you and the Lord. Because the Lord does want you to know that you are saved. These things were written so that you might know that you have eternal life. Lord, I want to pray right now if there's anyone out there who does not know that they have eternal life, I pray that they will hear the shepherd's voice. They will hear him calling them by name, and they will respond to him, and he will give them ears to hear, and they will have a converted sheep's hearing, the supernatural hearing of a sheep that knows the shepherd's voice and hears and responds to his call. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise for this. And everybody said, amen.